There's a small library at the Copperweld Wire and Cable Factory in Tennessee, where dusty binders contain the short circuit fusing values for various products made of copper clad steel, CCS. Hi, I'm Jeff Jordan, Power Grid Product Manager at Copperweld. In 2018, I joined the company with the plan to start a test program to better understand CCS performance in grounding applications. But I soon discovered that Copperweld first began short circuit testing at high power test labs in 1971. Back then, the empirical test results were used to create a predictive copper weld fusing limit formula. We published our formula and quick reference fusing limit tables. However, for some reason, we elected not to publish any of the supporting tests or test methodology, just the results. 10 years later, in 1981, a threat emerged to CCS grounding as IEEE adopted a new universal formula proposed by a brilliant engineer and committee member named Sferak, which supposedly would work for any conductor. Think one ring to rule them all sort of thing. This breakthrough, of course, was very helpful for any substation designer looking to evaluate various grounding materials. But using the new formula, the fusing limits for CCS were adjusted down. For example, the limit for 19 number 9 CCS was changed from 41 to 34 Ka. And Copperweld may have misjudged the impact these paperwork changes would have in the future with the advent of computer-aided design software. Decades later, in 2018, we decided to verify performance at the lab. The Copperweld 19 number 9 CCS did not fuse at 34 Ka or at 36 Ka. So we brought our initial results to the experts in the design software community, namely CDEGS and ETAP. And we finally published our data, new and old, in Wire and Cable News. As you might imagine, it came as a bit of a shock, but the implications were clear. With a proper set of data, we might be able to make the predictive formula in IEEE Standard 80 better. So we invested in more testing. 